Discord, and let me share my screen. <clears throat> you know, if this was like a regular school meeting, usually in a school meeting, I always start off with victories. And um, Brands Kempo, he's uh, one of the clients, he's up in Connecticut, he's got 230 Kempo students. He's doing pretty well. Um, he set a goal, which I thought was a pretty big goal. He set a goal for 48000 this month. And um, oh, that was a big March goal since he has 230 students. Um, he sent me his uh, operating control sheet, which is his stats and his numbers. And he just hit $53,000 with a uh, week left to go in March. So I think that's totally amazing. So I want to give a shout out to uh, him. Um, Mr. Joe is the manager of the school. We've been talking. He's been doing a lot of business the last couple months. He has been doing a lot of cash. So one of his goals was to always do like in, in the mid 40s. He changed a little month by month. Um, he does well over 40 in contract amount and cash. Uh, the problem was he just wasn't getting a uh, enough cash to, to make his uh, goal. So this month he was a little more serious on his incentives for paid in fulls. And um, I think he did like 12,000 in paid in fulls so just on upgrades this month. So that really helped him uh, catapult him over the top. So shout out to him. Anyone else have a victory they want to share this month? No one wants to follow up Rams Kempo? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, it's cool because the reason I want to lead this today is because we do have a week left for March, and we still have plenty of time to get our March goal. Uh, it's also the end of the first quarter, so this is a time of the year we really want to look at not only our numbers, but our indicators and our statistics so we can make changes for the next quarter. Um, so even though this month is just about done, uh, the year is only one a quarter done, so it's time to kind of sit back really analyze what we're doing and see what kind of changes we can make before the, uh, the end of the year or the start of the second quarter. So what I like to do, especially this week, because I do have six days left. And so if I'm behind on my goal, I just want to know what I really have to do. So what was the goal for March? Um, no, that's the wrong page we got here. So what was the goal for March? Where do you want to be on March uh, 31st? Then you want to know, okay, that was uh, my goal. What's the gap? So where am I right now? And how much do I have to need to get my goal for March 31st? Um, if this is kind of new to you, and you're not used to selling, uh, setting financial goals, I know a lot of school owners do that. A lot of school owners just, I'm just going to do the best I can. And the best I can, the problem is, it's not really a goal that you can go for. So if you're not doing monthly goals or yearly goals for uh, uh, your growth, I think this would be a good time to start that. So what's your goal for the end of March? Where are you right now? What is that gap? That's what you really want to know right now. And then divide it by six. There's still six days left to the month. And so we know exactly what we have to do. So. What's the goal? Where are we now? What's the gap? What do we have to do? So what do we have to do in terms of money? Then you have to sit down and plan that. So if you're looking right now, say, I still got to do $4,000 this month to hit my March goal. Okay, let's look at how many people we have coming in during uh, doing intro classes. Well, do we have a possibility of cashing a couple of those people out? And what are we in taking down payments? Okay, we look at that and go, man, I'm still going to be behind. Okay, what do we have coming up that people are going to be supposed to be talking to next month as far as upgrades? Can we talk to them a week earlier? Or would there uh, be room for, to get maybe a paid in full out of one of those upgrades or at least a good down payment? Maybe it's okay. I really uh, gone through that thoroughly. I don't have that. Okay, what else is left? You know, I did sign up 10 people this month. Only two people paid in full, so I have eight people that said they wanted to do monthly payments. What if I talk to them now, because they've been enrolled for a couple weeks, and I say, when you first enrolled, they did give you an opportunity to save 20% if you wanted to do a paid in full. I know you didn't take advantage of that at the time, but just before I send all the paperwork in for the end of the month, I want to give you another opportunity. 
So maybe they did sign up a couple of weeks ago. They didn't see the total value of the program there. They weren't ready to pay in full. Now all of a sudden their child's been in class a couple of weeks. They've got a chance to see the instructors. You've built a little more trust with them. So maybe they're gonna to wanna to take care of this opportunity. So the whole idea is I have to plan. I can't just say I need another $4,000. I have to look and see what's ahead of me and then I have to make a plan for that. Uh, same time this month, you know, the uh, year's one uh, quarter of the way through, we want to look at some of the things we're doing. We just got to find our percentages. So how many enrollments did we get and how many trials did I have to teach to get those enrollments? So maybe you're just saying, well, you know, I had 100 people take a trial program and I signed 50 uh, people up. Okay, you're 50%. So for every five people you're gonna sign up, you have to give 10 intro classes. Well, what if we can improve that? You know, is there a way to get a more effective class? Uh, can you do a more effective tour? Could you maybe come out with a nicer presentation folder so when the parents are sitting down watching classes, uh, your folder's actually selling your program. Your folder becomes almost your uh, website in paper form so people are really educating themselves. Maybe it's your presentation. Um, person doing the presentation, maybe you get nervous when they're talking about paid and folds and they have to overcome that. They have to go in more confidence. Maybe they're afraid to ask for a paid and full and they're asking for payments and well, you know, people just not ready to roll. Something's going wrong. Something can be improved through the entire procedure. So really the procedures, enrollments to trials if you're not getting the number you want or you think you can improve, you have to dissect that to find out what um, components are involved in that trial program in going up to the sale. What was the percentage of appointments to trial? So how many appointments did you have to get to have 50 people to show up? You know, maybe you needed all of a sudden 50 people made appointments, 25 people showed up. Well, can we improve that? Can we improve the way people make appointments? Can we improve the way we follow up on those appointments and do confirmation? If we can just improve that area, we can improve the number of students and the gross for the last three quarters of the year. How many leads did you get? What was the total number of inquiries? See, I like this different. A lot of people get leads. Uh, in fact, I was looking on the Rainmaker. I see we have uh, one guy in Delaware. He says, I get so many leads, I can't follow up. Well, leads are people saying that they may have some type of interest. They got on your website. Um, maybe they inquired about looking at your schedule. But, you know, that's just a lead. And then there's a person who's going to walk in your front door and say, hey, you know, I have a son who's interested in martial arts. I go by the school all the time. I just want to come in and see what the school is going on. Well, when you get an inquiry, you should get more appointments out of inquiry. But you want to look at both. How am I doing on my leads? Are my leads actually making appointments? How am I doing on my inquiries? If you want to improve those, we have to decide what components are involved in that system and trying to improve each component, and then we get better results out of the system. You may look at your numbers and go, man, I'm going to give myself a pat on the back. You know, I'm doing all these classes. In fact, I did 100 trial classes and 95 people signed up. Go, wow, that's great. You're doing really good. Is there a way you can look at that and say, wow, I'm getting 95%. Money's probably not a factor. It must be doing such a good job. When I present the money in the program, everyone's signing up. Could I charge more? Could I ask for more? Could I ask for a longer a program? So sometimes we just say, hey, I'm doing fantastic, pat on the back. You're doing fantastic, but can we look at that and find room for improvement? So this is what you really want to be doing this time of the year. Again, there's certain times of the year we really like to look at the numbers. We had a good 90 days, a good part. That's going to give us some really good averages. We can look at those numbers, and then we have to look at those numbers with the mindset that, hey, numbers don't lie. This is exactly what's happening. Now that I know what's happening, I'm going to look for ways to improve or to uh, uh, better my team. So again, we have systems, and within systems, we have little components. So when we have a system of getting new students and growth, there's a lot involved in that. One is our marketing. 
So maybe we're looking at our number of leads and the number of inquiries go, that's good. In addition to making more appointments, I want to get more leads. And so, you know, I'm going to increase my marketing. I know I have eight marketing pillars. Um, I've got this marketing bucket on my desk. When I look at my marketing bucket, you know, I'm getting some pretty good appointments, but my marketing bucket's not really full. In fact, I'm not even doing birthday parties half as often as I should. I know I could be doing a promotional booth a week, but I'm doing more like a promotional booth a month. You know, I know I should be doing um, four posts a day on Facebook. I'm doing four a week, so is there an improvement? So, you know, marketing, what can we do to improve that? Again, I think I just uh, uh, mentioned this before, that how do we handle leads and inquiries? Um, I know a lot of people with leads and inquiries really have a good flow through Rainmaker. So they're letting Rainmaker give a nice follow-up email. They're also using Rainmaker to schedule a task. Now, I sent the person an email, but I also know that not everyone reads an email. So today, these are the people I have to call. They had an inquiry, I have to introduce myself. Um, then maybe you wanna follow up with a text. But you want to make sure you have a very good follow-up system and see which ways you can kind of tighten up that. Scheduling appointments. Now, one of the cool things about Rainmaker that I really love is the ability to, for a student to schedule appointments when they go to your website. But I don't see that being used as much. So people have a website and they give information on the website. And then they have a way that all of a sudden they, you're kind of going for the sale and say, so, okay, this is a profit generator. And it stops there. They've never really filled out where people can look at the schedule and actually can schedule an appointment for their time. Now, William Pierce, I know does a lot of the meetings on Wednesday. He talks about this a lot of times. Uh, I think he was mentioning in January, he scheduled like 79 appointments for a fitness class. And he never even talked to one of these people. They all got on his website and they schedule appointments. Mm. Now, you may be... Uh, you know, kind of old school and go, yeah, I still rather talk to people. Oh, well, not everyone wants to talk to you. So yeah, we want to talk to people. We want to do a good job. But I know my daughter, she makes all appointments. I mentioned last week that she uh, took the twins and they signed up for a uh, twist and turn ninja class someplace. It was sold out. They had to go into the next day. This person didn't even have a phone number on the website. It was a brand new business. It was called Twist and Turn Ninja. It was like a ninja warrior type, it uh, uh, wasn't really a martial arts class where they were climbing ladders and the curved wall and things like that. But the point is, they sold out on their classes, never even talked to anyone. So scheduling appointments, are we making people go through hoops to schedule appointment, or do we use the power of Rainmaker to make sure that can be done online? Again, the follow-up, um, I know a lot of people want to be automated, and uh, William kind of talks about this. He likes to be automated because he doesn't want anyone to slip through the cracks. He also knows the importance of personal contact. So in that follow-up system, make sure you do both. You know, automate because, you know, that's a cool thing to do. But at the same time, we're automating. We want to make sure we get on the phone. Um, that's the way we start building trust with people. Also, you may look and someone say, hey, this guy scheduled an appointment on, on the line. That's awesome. They scheduled it three weeks from now. Well, what can we do to get him to make that commitment a little earlier? Because we know that people can change their minds. So if they do make uh, appointments far off, when well, we do talk to them, now we can try to talk them into coming earlier. Uh, again, we talk about enrollment procedures. I've already done that. And improvement in one or more of these areas will improve your total performance. Next part, again, it's all about the gross. Um, so your gross is made up of new student down payments, new student paid in fulls, see how you did. Um, I know everyone has different beliefs in this. Some people just say, I want the security of getting a check. I wanna make sure my money coming in from Rainmaker, that's my security. Other people would rather have the money in their bank account. You know, I'm not gonna wait Rainmaker to six months to get the money when it can go in my bank account today. Uh, if you're a good disciplined person uh, with your money, uh, to me, th that's nice. I look in a bank account, that shows some security. 
But if you want to improve your growth, you just have to realize that I can do things one way or I can do things another way. And the other way is to accelerate the payments. So when we accelerate the payments, maybe we're going to get a bigger down payment. Maybe instead of six payments on a six month program, we get four payments on a six month program. Um, again, percentage of down uh, people paying in full. I uh, kind of agree with my buddy Paul Garcia in this. I like 40 to 50% of the people to pay in full. And the reason I like to pay in full, those people are really easy to upgrade when it comes to either going to a renewal program or to a longer program. So we have the new payments for downs, new student payment fulls. We have upgrades and renewals. We have down payments on those. I know it's pretty uh, common in the industry not to get a down payment and upgrade renewal just to roll into monthly payments. That's okay, but you know, if, uh, if you explain a down payment as a percentage of the cost of the whole program so they can finance it, a down payment makes sense to people. They're used to buying a car or other things and they have to put money down. And, and the down payment just allows them to finance the program. A lot of times the instructor goes, you know, my renewal is pretty expensive. It's, it's a, a year program and I charge $200 a month. It's $2,400 to do a paid in full. Um, that's just a lot to ask for. Well, maybe it's a lot to ask for for you, but there's are people that don't want to have any payments. You know, they want to make sure that if they buy something, they can afford it and they want to pay it in full. They don't want to have payments. They find that, hey, if I do a uh, one year paid in full, I'm gonna save $300. Well, someone who's really smart with their money and they know their child's gonna love this because they've been doing it already for a year. They love the program, they love the instructor, the kids love going to classes, the parents are in total support, the kid has uh, friends in the school. Well, I already know this, I'm not going anywhere. So if I can save a few hundred dollars, I'm gonna save a few hundred dollars. So there is a lot of money left behind on paid in fulls or, or on our renewals often because you just don't ask for the paid in fulls. Another source of income is add-ons. If you're doing hyper, maybe you're doing Kali, maybe you have a demo team, maybe you have an instructor training program, and these are all one time a week, or not, I'm sorry, yeah, one time a week programs and maybe charge $15 a class, so an add-on is $60 per month. Well, if you kind of follow our system, and every three months you do an invitational, and when you do an invitational, you invite people to try out these add-on programs. So they come in, they're very excited, they feel special because you invited them. Uh, the parents are curious at why you invited their child. Uh, they come in, you do a great hyper class, you tell them that this is a way to set higher goals, uh, um, to challenge the student, and it's $60 per month. Of course, you know, if you just want to pay this in full today for $500, you can do that. 10 people is a 5,000 uh, uh, increase on your gross. So when you start looking at someone like Jim Moran, who we congratulated at the beginning of this meeting, you go, well, Jim did $50,000, he's got 230 students, how is it getting this average student to pay like $215 per month? Well, they don't. In fact, his uh, cost of his program is only $139 a month. But he does get people to pay in full on uh, new programs and people to pay in full on renewal programs. And that helps us. He also does add-ons. He's got a, uh, an MMA add-on. He's got a competition team add-on. His instructor training add-on. So even though his core program is $139, people are spending more of that because they're taking more electives in the school. Um, some schools do testing fees. Just a note here, Jim Brand's doing that without testing fees. He includes his testing fees into his program. Um, some schools did really good this month because of spring camp. I know that in Florida, the kids are into their 10th day of uh, spring camp. This is their last day off. But there's a lot of money to be made in camps events, equipment, and retail. Equipment and retail should, again, all be tied into your programs. So if you're looking right now in the first quarter and go, man, I wish I could just get more retail. I'm not selling enough product. Well, decide what product students need to have to successfully com uh, complete your program. 
if you're doing a cycle where they have four different weapons, I mean, pick out um, you know weapons that are affordable to the students and put that in a package. Maybe also have an upgrade package. So instead of just getting the be the basic weapons, they're getting like the high quality hyper type weapons that are more expensive. But there's ways to improve your retail equipment along with your programs. I know we talk about this four times a year, but um, again, it's one of those times a year where all of a sudden we have like, it's, it's almost like New Year's, you know, we're getting into the second quarter now. So now we have, we're starting all over. Okay, the first quarter is behind us. These are all our numbers. I'm gonna analyze the numbers. I'm gonna put them together. We're gonna revamp a plan and we're gonna turn out having the second quarter better than the first quarter. And if you're not setting goals, start now. Um, even if you just look at your goals, what did I do in April last year? And my goal this year is gonna improve it by 10%. So maybe you don't really have a plan for a goal setting. That's just one idea. If I can do 10% better than last year, that'd be a good goal for me. Um, maybe you can follow up the next month and do the exact same thing. Um, that's one of Tom Baker's secrets. He always looks at what he did the previous year per month, and his goal each month is to beat that by 10%. And um, he's very, very consistent in that. He usually beats it by more than 10%. But that's the way he sets his goals. Uh, that form of goal setting is called the weighted averages. He's not trying to improve or beat last month. He's trying to beat last month of last year because months are different, you know. Uh, March is a really good month. April is a really good month. July maybe is not good of a month, so it's hard to say I'm going to keep improving by 10%, and then all of a sudden July comes, and you're going to miss that goal. But you can beat last July by 10%. So look over your uh, results from the years before, and again, that's called weighted averages. Do we have any comments or questions on things I went over? This is great. Super good. Okay. Um, excellent. I just happen to be a numbers guy. You know, I really like looking at numbers. Um, I, when I had my school, I really enjoyed looking at the stats. And I really challenged myself, what can I do to improve those stats? Um, when stats first came out, this is when to give you a little history lesson. When educational funding was around, Nick Kokinas was uh, teaching everyone how to improve their business. Um, most of the schools, if not all the schools in the United States weren't doing contracts. So he introduced some people to doing contracts and doing sales. And he had the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 rule wasn't really statistics on martial arts. It was statistics as far as business goes. Usually like 20% of the year clients are bringing 80% of your business. So he came up with the rule that of, uh, out of so many phone calls, you should make 80% appointments. Uh, those 80 or those uh, appointments, 80% of the people will show. Uh, the people show 80% of the people will take their first class. Uh, people who took the first class, 80% of the people will show up for the second class. So that's the history of that. Um, basically, that was the history of that because he didn't really have stats to go for uh, before that. So it wasn't really statistics of an average martial arts school. It was business statistics that are generally worldwide. So you can't really look at your school and say, okay, it's an 80-20 rule because it may not apply totally to you. You have to find out what you're doing and then you have to work on improving your specific numbers. I remember when I was doing first class to second class, I just couldn't see why, why would someone come and take a first class and not come back for their second class? Why would 20% of the people not do it? I go, well, the only reason they wouldn't come back is they met me and I didn't do a very good job. So I said, that, that's got to be 95%, if not 100%. If I'm really listening to the person who comes to my school, I'm finding out exactly what they're looking for, I know how I can help them, and I convey that message, they all should come back for their second class. The only reason they may not come for a second class is the kid's too young, he's not too ready, he's going to just freak out. And well, maybe I have to give him private classes, but you know, to me, I was really strong in myself. So again, look at your numbers, make improvements on you as an individual. If you need any help, because I know I kind of went over everything, but not into the details,
But if you do need help, there's probably a good chance that I did a video over the last couple of years on the program and I said all my videos, so I'll get that out to you. Okay, everyone, enjoy the day. I know that was a lot of stuff, a lot of talk about numbers. But again, as long as it, just, I'm just gonna leave you one, one last story because it's, it's about numbers, but I wasn't thinking about the numbers. Uh, when I had my school in Coral Springs, and it's really neat because I some kid posted a picture on my line the other day, and I had like five kids white belts. He goes, I remember taking my first class, and it's like five kids. And um, my school grew pretty fast, so that had to be one of the, uh, the the first weeks I was open. I had this guy Sergio painting words on my wall. So he was painting clouds, and in the clouds, clouds he put like perseverance, discipline. Same thing people still do, but it was a little bit different. He's painting. He's watching me teach these classes. He goes, man, he says, you're not going to have to worry about the money. I go, what are you talking about, Sergio? He goes, the class you just took, you made such a difference in those kids' lives just in the little time they were there. They were paying attention to you. They were listening to you. I could see what a big change you're going to have. You just keep doing that. You don't have to worry about the money. Um, that was a pretty a big boost of confidence. Uh, but at the same time, we are in business. Bill Clark once told me, you know, uh, money is the score we keep uh, when we're doing business. And so, you know, when you, you're looking at that, if I'm doing a good gross, I know I'm doing a good job. I'm servicing a lot of people and people who are happy. So um, when I talk about money, it's not like I'm disregarding the martial arts. I'm assuming everyone's doing a great job, giving you great service. People are going to be happy to pay you for that service. Uh, you have to be feel good about accepting money because you're adding so much to people's lives. So we have to think about the money, but at the same time, we don't disregard um, the service. Or, um, we're not selling out. That's far from it. Okay, everyone. Hope you enjoyed. Talk to you tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Okay.